On today's video we look at a pair of Shearer walkie-talkies. These are 49 meg walkie-talkies and were manufactured somewhere around about 1980. Um, now for many of you that follow the sort of walkie-talkie scene um, these will probably seem fairly familiar to you. They seem very commonplace on uh, uh, eBay and other um, auction sites and I managed to pick up this really nice set for about £20 delivered to me. So I was really really pleased because I've seen these go up as high as £50 odd. Anyway for 49 meg sets these are actually very very good so please keep watching because many of the 49 meg sets are not that great in terms of range but we'll have a little play with that later. Now for some reason in my mind I thought I may have seen a version of these in a sort of gold colour as well. Uh, maybe somebody could leave a comment down below if they ha have as well but I happen to have this pair in a nice attractive aluminium sort of dusky silver colour. So anyway, the, uh, it was nice to see that there were both the battery uh, um, pack clips were there and uh, uh, the backs were there and that the, uh, on initial inspection that the battery connectors looked to be in fairly good nick. And in fact the batteries, you normally see signs of access down the sides of the radio and these looked like they were fairly new. However, I think what may have happened is that these um, stopped working very shortly after they were purchased and they were just simply put back in the box. And I think I know what the culprit was. As you can see there where the 9 volt battery had sat in the radio there was some noticeable acidic staining on the paper down there. So this one was first to be looked at I thought. We'll have a look at this one and see if it's done any further damage. Now luckily it hadn't done any other damage to the inside of the unit and the inside of the unit was your very basic setup that you often see in these uh, type of radios which you'll have also seen on the channel. Now one slightly annoying thing you, you, you can see there, they've put this um, silicon sealant in all of the inductors so there's no possibility really for me to tune this without really going to town so I was really hoping that it would be on frequency. So I ran in the usual WD-40 to clean up the contacts and the PTT and I uh, popped a battery and had a go at turning it on. But alas there was nothing coming through. Now this is quite unusual actually, I don't normally have this issue. So I did a little bit more digging around and uh, looked at the back of the board to see if I could see any dry joints. And it all looked to be, you know, as they as they much are, you know. And, uh, and again, more notice, noticeable staining. Yet with a battery connected, I could get no voltage up at the board. So I had a closer look at the battery clip and I found that there was some, some serious corrosion going on behind the clip and it just wasn't making contact. So I fitted a new battery clip and wired it into the existing wires and got a nice shiny new clip there and uh, we plugged it in and turned it on and tried again and lo and behold it, it came into life um, now I didn't need to clean the potentiometer there and I didn't on either of them so don't ever clean them unless they really need cleaning so anyway I got the uh, SDR going and uh, decided to see how far off frequency this thing was and lo and behold, it wasn't far off at all. It was very, very close. So amazing to see that it didn't need anything doing. So I checked the receive side. And the same again with the receive. The receive was pretty damn close too. And the other unit, thankfully, didn't need anything doing to it other than a little bit of a switch clean. And that was working as well. So out to the field with Tyler for a little bit of a test of these superb looking little radios. Look, it could be 1980, look. He's even got a 1980s coat on. Right, well, we better get this test underway before uh, the rain clouds come in. Got Tyler, the helper here. We're gonna test these super retro looking Shearer walkie talkies. Look at that out in broad daylight. It really has got that telephone handset look about it, hasn't it? That was so popular with walkie talkies back in the day. And the ubiquitous Morse code button, which we will actually test on this test. We'll actually, because it, we should get a, a bit more uh, range with them with that. But these are fairly underpowered, but they have got a good length antenna. You see the antenna's a decent length, so they've got half a chance. Let's give them a go. Right, Tyler, the RF test engineer, is going to walk up the field with said radio. And I shall wait around here somewhere and we'll uh, have a bit of a test. We're also, like I say, going to test this code function in just showing him how that works, he can do a bit of morse. Okay, so let's turn the radios off and get into position. Off you go then. Right, as with, with these, we're not so sure how, what the range is, but at this range, um, Tyler, you give us the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. 
That's pretty good, isn't it? Pretty good. I've had them not work over this distance, trust me. Right, do you want to go up and get into position? Yeah, I think these are going to be half decent. Quite amazed, really. Um, as with all radios, they're a tinsy bit quiet. Probably more quiet than they used to be. But that's probably just the capacitors uh, drying out in them a little bit. Capacitor change would bring that up. Um, but otherwise, wow. I'm guessing these were just put back in the box purely and simply because of that battery lead. Um, but what a shame. Somebody could have been having tons of fun back then in the 80s and uh, and they didn't. Right. Yeah, he's over there. Okay, Tyler, that's, that's not bad. You're quite a distance. I tell you what, how do I sound? Do I sound okay? I didn't see that. Right, obviously yours, uh, yours is transmitting a bit better than mine. Do you want to try the Morse code? Try the beep beep, the beep in. Right, quite a, quite, it makes quite a difference. You just get another 10 feet away and he goes out of range. He's going to go and he's going to do the uh, Morse code test again. So, you want to try it? Try the Morse. Look, a bit of elevation really helps, doesn't it? Look, the difference that makes. Right, Tyler can hear me, but I can't hear him. So one is working better on transmit than receive. Right, do you want to give us the beep then, Tyler? Try again, the beep. The difference the bit of elevation makes. And then if I walk towards him, if I walk towards him like that, he'll come back in. Can you hear me now, Tyler? He's just about on the edge there, look. But I'll tell you what, that for 49 meg, for 49 meg walkie-talkies, that's pretty good going. That really is. And they're not perfectly aligned because because of the goo that was on the uh, uh, on the inductors on the uh, on the ferrites, I couldn't really align them. But they, they were pretty close, and the receivers tend to be really wide on these. So, um, yeah, impressive, really impressive. Right, I think this is about this is about the right sort of distance. This is about your limit. Um, do you want to give us the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog? There we go. Right, I'll come back up to you. Ha <laughs> ha They work really well. I mean, one thing you, you will find with a lot of these radios, these 49 meg sets or in the 27 meg ones, these underpowered uh, sets, is that one radio will be better than the other. And that's what we have here. One is, is slightly better on transmitter than the other one, or one receiver is slightly less sensitive. And of course, it is the receiver that lets these things down mostly in their... Uh, reception of the signals they're very very wide so you shouldn't worry too much if these are slightly off frequency because the receiver side is incredibly wide so but, th but that for for uh, for this type of radio that was impressive i haven't got many 49 meg sets that will go that kind of distance i guess the aerial helps having the longer antenna but these shearer radios were ones that caught my eye way back when i was a kid and uh they're always a little bit out of my price range so <laughs> so we finally got hold of some so yeah, I'm really pleased with those. I should pop those back in the box. They now live to see another day and I'm sure we'll probably get them out for a bit more fun. So anyway, I think Tyler's probably got something to say. Yeah, like, subscribe and thanks for watching. There we go. We'll see you on the next one.